we're at the uh, site of the new uh, chestnut restoration forest. Uh, this is going to be a long-term study forest where we're going to compare our transgenic, blight-resistant resi American chestnut trees to other type of chestnut trees, uh, back cross breeding, breeding uh, chestnut trees, uh, hybrid chestnut trees, and wild type American chestnut trees. And this place is going to be a place where we can look at what kind of trees will have the best benefit uh, for the environment. Uh, we just walked up the hill here, uh, surrounded by some old trees that we're going to leave. Uh, that's going to be the entranceway to the uh, project. Uh, we're going to end up having a parking lot just around where we're standing now. And then on all sides, we're going to have um, the different test plots. Uh, we're going to have a test plot down here of uh, both orchard type plantings as well as restoration type plantings. The restoration type plantings will be um, American chestnut trees uh, mixed in with uh, trees that are normally found in the wild, such as oaks and hickories, and uh, chestnuts will represent about 25% of those stands. Um, in addition to the four test plots uh, with the different types of trees, we're going to have, um, this is going to really be geared toward outreach, so we're going to have um, a palisade of trees uh, just at the uh, trailhead of the parking lot and we will have signage describing each type of tree we're testing as well as trails through the test plot so people can walk through and actually see what they uh, look like and actually go and touch the trees, see what's happening and, and learn about the American chestnut. In the future, once this um, thing is about 10 years old or, or, or older, we could actually have chestnut festivals out here where we'll have the orchards all set up and growing and people can go chestnut where they go out and collect chestnuts, just like they go to the apple orchards and collect uh, apples. They can do this with the uh, American chestnut and collect nuts. Uh, have a little festival where people have different types of chestnut foods and, and uh, all kinds of interesting things going on. And uh, take the nuts with them. These are our transgenic American chestnuts. They're grown in a sterile little uh, container. Unlike other trees that are grown from a seed, these we have to grow from little embryos in the lab. And then they germinate and grow into little shoots, okay, which we can then cut and multiply and make more of, sort of like you cut up a strawberry plant and make more strawberry plants, or a spider plant, or a potato. It's called vegetative propagation. Okay. And once these are nice and tall, what we're going to do is take them and cut off the little base that's uh, inside the media and dip it in a rooting hormone, like rootone or root powder that you buy at the hardware store. So I'll walk through the procedure as Tyler is performing it. He's got um, a forceps and scalpel and a little root uh, master 5000. He's got a spray bottle in order to keep the plants nice and moist uh, while they're getting a little uh, transferred into their new homes. So he's going to open up the cube, remove a little bit of cling film, keeping it nice and moist. And his bayonet forceps, he's going to grab the stem of the chestnut plantlet and pull it out. He's going to make a very tiny cut at the base of the shoe and then remove some of the leaves at the bottom of the shoe so they don't get dipped in the rooting hormone. He's going to prepare the peak palette by making a little hole and then dipping some of the root hormone into the hole. Then he will take the plant, hold it at the base of the stem of the forceps, give it another dip in the rooting hormone, so it's a little double dip there, and then carefully insert the base of the plant to the teeny tiny hole he made. Then the plant gets a nice little bath of water to keep it hydrated and is ready to sit in its little bin for a few weeks. And this is where the roots will eventually come out of the pellet ready for potting. So after doing an awful lot of the rooting procedure, we get a whole bin filled with little plants. They're all going through the rooting stage now. They've been there, in there about a week. And eventually, we're going to see little roots. And once we have a rooted plantlet, we take it over to the, get some time in the growth chambers. potted up into its own little pot with a little plastic bag to keep the humidity up for now. And, uh, it will grow in here 
for probably three to six months. They go up to the greenhouse to really get grown. And then when they are big enough, they come back down here to the high light growth chamber. This is where we want to produce flowering. The higher light causes the chestnuts to grow catkins instead of vegetative growth, okay? instead of leaves and shoots. We'll start getting catkins forming at these nodes. And then we can collect the pollen from these catkins. Half the offspring produced from the pollen from these trees will be resistant to the light plants. These trees have one copy of the chromosome, so we'll segregate the half of the sperm cells, and then half of the offspring will be uh, light resistant. The plot we're out here in uh, Tully, New York is about 150 feet by 300 feet and it's got about 100 chestnut trees, half of which are blight resistant, half of which are non-resistant mother trees. And what this will do is it'll force these two cultivars to cross with one another, uh, resulting in a larger percentage of the nut mass, which is actually contains the blight resistant gene. As we begin back crossing our clonal blight resistant tree with um, more diverse mother trees, we begin to recapture genetic diversity, which will allow us to have trees which are locally adapted to the climates, which will restore them.